My name is Mridula Reddy and I'm a medical oncologist here at Atrium Medical Center. Overall, I think the incidence of cancer is actually going down and um, as far as treatment goes, there have been so many new advances now, especially in areas of targeted treatment where molecular biology has made us all, you know, smarter and there have been newer treatments that come up that actually target certain receptors on cancer cells and those treatments have changed the outlook of cancer. Ovarian cancer is known to be a very difficult disease to diagnose, especially in the early stages. Part of the reason is because early on women don't have significant signs or symptoms from the disease. So early on their complaints are very vague and non-specific and they may not even seek medical attention for this because they don't feel sick enough. So most cases of ovarian cancer actually end up being diagnosed later on in the disease course. So a lot of patients that come to us are in the advanced stage, which means stage three or stage four. And that is the difficulty with ovarian cancer. The diagnosis of ovarian cancer would typically involve initially a thorough pelvic exam, which can be done by your gynecologist and the gynecologist would look for abnormal masses in the pelvic area and that raises suspicion that you have ovarian cancer. The next step is usually an ultrasound and often this is a transvaginal ultrasound and this looks at the ovaries and looks for abnormalities like a solid mass and any lymph node enlargement in that area, any collection of pelvic fluid or abdominal fluid in that area, which again raises suspicion for underlying cancer. The next step you may have is a CT scan of the abdomen and the pelvic area, and this is to determine the extent of the ovarian cancer. It helps by looking at the ovaries and the surrounding tissue, the pelvic tissue, as well as the lymph nodes, and we know the extent of cancer based on the findings on the CT scan. Also looks at fluid buildup in the abdomen and pelvic cavity, as well as looking at abdominal organs like the liver to see if there is any spread of cancer there. So that is very useful information again for staging your ovarian cancer and that will likely be the next step. There is a blood test that we often get for monitoring patients with ovarian cancer and also for initial diagnosis, which is called the cancer antigen 125 or CA125 level. And this is often elevated in almost 80% of patients with ovarian cancer, it will be high and this is something that we use also during treatment to monitor and see if the number goes down and it usually does if the treatment is successful it goes down and it helps to monitor for relapse as well because if the number starts to go up again during your follow-up visits it will raise suspicion for relapse of the cancer. The symptoms of ovarian cancer are abdominal pain, abdominal fullness or bloating due to fluid buildup in the abdominal cavity, and often urinary symptoms like urinary urgency or frequency. And patients may experience a lack of appetite and a feeling of fullness when they eat because of the abdominal fu uh, fluid buildup. And also, respiratory symptoms down the line if they do end up with fluid buildup around their lungs, which we refer to as a pleural effusion. The treatment for ovarian cancer can involve visits with multiple specialties, including a surgeon and a medical oncologist. The initial part of treatment most often involves surgery, and the purpose of surgery is twofold. Surgery helps to determine the extent of the tumor that is present in your body. And what a surgeon does when he goes in is also, in addition to removing the tumor, he will also look at the spread of disease beyond the ovaries into the pelvic cavity, 
into the lymph nodes surrounding that area and look at fluid in the abdominal and peritoneal cavities and see if that is also showing cancer cells. All of that information is very important to determine what treatment course you will have further after the surgery is done. So after the surgeon has looked at all these findings, we determine a treatment stage and that often determines whether you are going to have chemotherapy subsequently or require additional surgery down the line or can just be observed and not need any further treatment. The surgeon will also try to remove as much of the tumor as he possibly can because what we call optimal cytoreduction means removing tumor to where there's less than a centimeter of tumor left behind in your body. And that has been shown to improve survival more than anything else. So the volume of disease that is left behind, the amount of tumor that is left behind, will correlate directly with your survival. The less tumor that's left behind, the better your survival will be. So after surgery is accomplished, we often have you go to a medical oncologist who will look at the disease stage and determine if you need further treatment with chemotherapy. Now chemotherapy can be given both through the IV and also into the abdominal cavity. And oftentimes, depending on the stage of the cancer, we'll choose an option of giving IV chemotherapy and that goes on for a few months before the treatment is completed. After this, you will be on surveillance and doctors will watch you very closely to make sure that your cancer does not relapse. And that actually is the idea of giving the chemotherapy following surgery, which is to treat any remaining cancer cells and kill them before they cause a relapse of the ovarian cancer. Screening for ovarian cancer is not routinely recommended for women who are at average risk for ovarian cancer. Now, the lifetime risk for the general population of women to develop ovarian cancer is about 1.4%. And there have been trials looking at a combination of using transvaginal ultrasound as well as a tumor marker we call the CA125 level and to see if doing these on an annual basis will detect ovarian cancer sooner and lead to improved survival. Now, the three trials that looked at the combination of the transvaginal ultrasound and the CA125 level did not show any decrease in mortality from ovarian cancer. So the recommendation now is not to screen average risk women for ovarian cancer. Now, if you were to have a history of ovarian cancer in your family and have what we call the hereditary ovarian cancer syndromes, for example, the breast ovarian cancer syndrome, which is associated with a BRCA mutation, your risk for developing ovarian cancer is much higher, sometimes often described in the range of 35 to 40 percent. So the screening parameters would be different if you had that history of hereditary ovarian cancer or breast cancer in your family. You would need a transvaginal ultrasound as well as a CA125 level and the screening would begin about five to 10 years before the earliest age at which the diagnosis was made in your family member. So that is the recommendation for patients who have the hereditary cancer syndromes. Otherwise, for average risk women, there are no standard recommendations to screen for ovarian cancer, unlike with breast cancer where you do get annual mammograms. Now, a lot of these testing for diagnosis and screening all can be done at one time when you come into Atrium Medical Center. You do not have to go to separate visits or separate offices to get all of this testing done, which is a great benefit for patients who are in the middle of trying to get a diagnosis and getting a treatment plan in place.